Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy, the creator of McCarthy Math Academy. And I wanna start this episode by thanking you for taking time out of your crazy, busy, non-stop, hectic schedule to join me on this episode of Breaking Down the Best, where today we will talk about the standard or break down the standard rather, this one right here. It is ma.3.nso.1.2. So here are some of my thoughts with this standard, okay? So it says to compose, which means that we're going to put together, and decompose means to break down. So throughout this whole standard, we're taking numbers and we're either composing them, putting them together, or taking them apart and breaking them down or decomposing them. Okay, we're doing this with four digit numbers. So we've got the ones place, tens place, hundreds place, and thousands place in multiple ways. This is something that's really enforced throughout this standard is being really flexible with how we compose and decompose answers. That there's more than one way to compose or decompose these numbers, okay? Um, da -da 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 -da. We can do that using objects, oops. Why is it getting so glitchy? Sorry. All right, I just made some notes of like it being objects and drawings, which I'll show you some of that and expressions or equations. Remember that expressions means that we do not have an equal sign present. And equations means that there is an equal sign present. So if you have three plus two, that's an expression. If you have three plus two equals something blank, that's an equation because there's an equal sign present. Okay, here's the example. The number 5,783 can be expressed, now this is where we're taking the number and we're decomposing it as five thousands. And you can see here we have a numeral word form, the number five, the numeral, the word thousands, numeral word. Five thousands plus seven hundreds plus eight tens plus three ones or because we're hitting that multiple ways, that flexibility, it could also be written as 56 hundreds and 183 ones. And you might be saying, what in the world? Well, let me show you what that means. So 56 hundreds means that 56 lands in the hundreds place. So that's really 5,600 plus 183. What we're doing now is we're taking the decomposed number and composing it back together. So, sorry that this is, let me move this down. So if I move this down over here, all right, so zero plus, and then you just add it up. To remember, I'm not teaching kids here, so there we go. Adding it up and you can see it gets you back to that standard form of 5,783. That example shows multiple ways that it can be decomposed. Let's see what's connecting in this grade level. What other standards does this one connect to? We have 3.nso.1.1, which by the way, I forgot to mention that the MA stands for math. The three right here stands for the grade level. NSO is the strand, number sense operations, and then 1.2 is our standard that we're working with or our benchmark. Okay, so the connecting benchmarks in third grade would be reading and writing numbers, that's NSO.1.1, and NSO.2.1 is where we're adding and subtracting. And actually, this is a really, this standard right here that we're going over today, NSO.1.2, composing and decomposing is wonderful practice for regrouping, which really helps students to understand 
what we are doing when we're regrouping numbers when we're adding or when we're regrouping numbers when we're subtracting and regrouping means like to take one from the hundreds and bring it over into the tens and all of that the intention of the standard is wonderful for regrouping for truly understanding what we're doing when we're regrouping um, some expressions that you some expressions some words that you need to know some terms expression means that there is no equal sign present i think we said that already and we need to know whole numbers we're not working with fractions or decimals really in third well we'll work with fractions later but in this standard just whole numbers zero and up okay um up to four digits now where are they coming from in second grade they basically did the same thing they composed and decomposed three digit numbers so you can see the difference here is that in second grade they decomposed the a number that had three digits where in third grade we're taking it up to a four digit number and then next year this will help our students because they'll learn about 10 times greater than or less than which eh, I think that's a stretch for a connection if I'm being honest with you um, it helps this helps with place value which will help with their place value standard in fourth grade that's for sure um, and also it does help with reading and writing numbers zero to a million y'all in fourth grade so you can see where this standard is going to prepare them for next year um, let's see purpose and instructional strategies you can definitely read this but i'll just take some time to point out some of the things that jumped out at me um, it said that the purpose of this benchmark is to identify ways numbers can be written flexibly multiple ways this builds number sense we're taking time to build this number sense up i love it using decomposition and i'm going to be honest with you this standard is kind of tricky i want you to take time not only here but like as you continue moving forward into your other lessons keep coming back how else could we express this number right it kind of goes with our standard before this where we're reading and writing numbers using standard form word form expanded form like continue to have these conversations that's really going to help you i mentioned before that the standard is great for regrouping understanding okay and also number talks if you do number talks in your room or if you have not done number talks yet with your students this is a great way to start off the lesson is saying like okay if you had the number 5783 how many different ways can we represent this number how many different ways can we decompose this number so yeah that's the standard form but we could connect it back to nso.1.1 which is writing it in word form writing it in expanded form and then we're taking that a step further by decomposing this number a variety of ways um so it's taking time to show like for here that 100 could be regrouped as 10 tens so if you were to compose this five thousands plus six hundreds and notice there's a seven in the hundreds place there but they're saying six hundreds they've regrouped one of those hundreds into the tens. So instead of being eight tens, they're saying it could also be 18 tens if we regroup plus three ones, okay? Um, I love this. Allow students to decompose numbers as many ways as possible. Once they start to realize that the possibilities for decomposing numbers, there's so many different ways, then it becomes more fun and that really builds their understanding there. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I mentioned this before in the last standard 1.1 and SO.1.1 take time with that zero sometimes in here let me point this out real quick while I can like for let me see if we had 1028 yeah there's a zero here but that could also be ten hundreds plus two tens plus eight ones okay that zero does mean something there even though there are zero hundreds technically we actually have ten hundreds if we regrouped right um and if you are kind of confused with what i'm saying with that then i definitely suggest taking a look at some of the video lessons that i'll show you in just a minute after we finish breaking down the standard um was there anything in the oh i mentioned yup here because flexibility of place value is huge for standard algorithm for addition and subtraction that goes with this one right here. uh yeah so the connecting benchmark right here 
it's huge. This is a great segue. It's a great prerequisite into NSO.2.1, which is adding and subtracting. Um, what else? What else? What else? Do, do, do. This one's talking about making sure that like here, there's a five in the tens place. It doesn't represent five. It represents 50 and taking time with your students to explain that. Okay. And then you can see some of the different tasks and one instructional item that they give you. One thing that I did want to point out though, for this instructional item is to make sure, I know that you're probably already doing this, but just a reminder that, um, when you see this, have your students show the journey for each one of these. So really taking each one of these and solving them out. Yeah, it takes more time, but we are mathematicians here. That is what we need to be doing. We need to show our work. We need to go through each one thoroughly to make sure that we've investigated each answer choice. So instead of saying show their work, I usually say show their journey. Okay, show the journey, show me how you got there. You would take all of these answer choices and add them back together to see if it gets us a value of 8,709. That's taking a decomposed, all these decomposed values and composing them back and seeing if that's what you get. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at some of the resources that you have. So we're gonna enter, you can either enter here or up here at the tab, members enter here. Let's take a look at taking on the best. Which grade are we in? Today's episode, we're in third grade. Which strand? NSO, number sense and operations. And today we're looking at 3.NSO.1.2 composing and decomposing numbers. All right, so if you are a bronze level member, here's what you have. You have access to this right here is regrouping basics. It's a video lesson on the basics of regrouping. And um, here's the printable over here. And basically what's happening is we have the same number. We have 243. And then we're decomposing that number different ways and adding it up over here. You can see that in the video lesson, okay? So this is the printable guide for the video lesson. We also have the first way to decompose numbers. Basically, decomposing numbers number one is like the basic way to decompose. And then for number two, decomposing number, decomposing numbers, Number two, we're going to start regrouping. So, okay, so for decomposing numbers, number one, it's like the most basic way to regroup. This is saying that it could be 34 hundreds plus six ones or 340 tens plus six ones. It's teaching the different ways to decompose them, okay? Um, then number two is taking it up a notch where not only are we decomposing the numbers, we're also regrouping. So we might, for this one, it's the same number, which is great because it shows a variety. Now we're gonna have six different ways that we've decomposed this number by the time we're done with version number one and version number two. But this would be like taking one of the thousands and regrouping it over into the hundreds. Definitely take a look at that video lesson if you're like, what in the world is she saying? That's why I've got those video lessons, not only there for your students, that's who they're for, but hopefully you can learn through, through them as well. Um, and then also composing numbers, which by the time they have spent decomposing these numbers, composing numbers seems like a breeze. <laughs> now, if you have access to the silver plan, you have access to more resources. Not only do you have the bronze, but if you click here, you also get some extras. You get some printables, right? Here's your printables, which shows you, you got your video lessons. All right, then you've got some extra practice here. So here we go. Which way would show how to decompose? Again, for this kind of problem, make sure your students are showing their work for each one. For A, where's your work? For B, where's your work? For C, where's your work? D, they probably will need an extra sheet of paper. Make sure they're showing their work, or as I like to say, showing their journey. Um, lots of, so you can see here, this was the video lesson, decomposing numbers the first way, which is just the basic way to decompose numbers. Okay, we get extra practice one for that same lesson. And then I know that they're gonna need more practice, so I gave you another extra practice two, for that same lesson, okay? Then we move on to video lesson number two, extra practice number three. Here's some extra practice for that one that we just watched. Two of them, in fact. 
these are select all the ways. So see, it's going to take a lot of work. It's a, even though there's only three problems, there's a lot of work that a student will be doing on this. Um, then we have decom or sorry, composing numbers for the last video lesson. And we have some extra practice there. Here's where we tie it all together, where our math missions, which is like a math task, putting the standard all together, maybe mixing in and connecting in some other standards that we may have gone over too. So for here, you can see it says use the number 1,862 to complete the following tasks. Express the number using only hundreds and ones. Model with a drawing. Express the number using only thousands, tens, and ones and model with a drawing. And this is the math misconception mystery problem. Express the number 2,438 using only tens and ones, which is an example that they gave us in the standard. Um, not the same example, but similar to it. So, um, bah, 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 bah. so again, back to the silver page. This is your video that goes with that math misconception mystery episode. You can take a look at it, but again, you've got four characters, three of them are solving it incorrectly, one of them solves it correctly, and your students have to discuss and reason and think critically as to who is correct and who is not and why. It is all kinds of fun and all kinds of learning, and here are the answer keys for those printables that we went over. You can check those out. All right, and then if you have access to the gold plan, which means you have everything in the bronze, everything in the silver, plus you have these bonus items. You have access to a mini assessment. Do, 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 do. You can take a look. And here's your mini assessment answer key. Breaking down the best for teachers, that's what you're watching right now. So hopefully by the time you are accessing your gold resources, the video is gonna be right in there. And you also have access to the program before I created this program, which was McCarthy Math 155. It is aligned to the common core standards, but there's still a lot of good stuff, a lot of good practice. So um, for this one, we there wasn't a whole lot of re for composing and decomposing numbers that much for third grade for the Common Core standards. So you're not really going to get much here, but you have access to all kinds of stuff for McCarthy Math 155. We've got adding and subtracting. You still do that. Multiplication, you have that this year. Division, patterns, two-step word problems, measurement, fractions, perimeter and area, time, shapes, and attributes. There's a lot of stuff that does trickle over. Just taking on the best is more focused for your needs, okay? This is just extra stuff for the gold members. All right, everybody, thank you again for joining me on this episode. And before we go, let me remind you that what you are choosing to do with your life, it really matters. You really matter. Now, I know that this profession is super tough and exhausting, but I believe in you and I mean that. And the truth is our students, they are the future. We may never know how our time spent with our students truly impacts them, but we have to believe that it does make a difference. We have to believe that what we choose to wake up and do each day with our lives helps them to step into the people that they were born to be. So thank you for being you. You are awesome. Teachers are just rock stars in my heart. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Breaking Down the Best, and I cannot wait to see you next time. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.